بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا عبی القاسم المصطفى محمد الله شل علی محمد و آل محمد و علی آل الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله عبد العظیم عجل الله تعالی فرجه الشریف We've been studying the values and virtues according to Islamic ethics and we said that we may be able to introduce one fundamental value which is the core of Islamic ethics and everything else originates from that. We talked about the fact that any moral statement or instruction Islam is based on reality. This was a session two weeks ago. And then last week we talked about sedr and trustworthiness. Uh, and we mentioned some hadith about the significance of sedr and also some verses of the Quran about sedr. And there are of course more hadith and more verses about sedr. But what I want to do today is to talk about the concept of haq in Islam and then inshallah we go back to the concept of sidq because you cannot understand sidq without understanding haq. Okay? So we have to understand haq so that we understand why sidq is so important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an which is very accurately said the accuracy of the Qur'an is according to Allah's knowledge so we may not understand all the subtle points which are in the Quran maybe after centuries but there is always something to discover you know if you are hundred percent sure that what is in the text is accurate then you spend all your life to discover but if it is a text said by a person who is ordinary person I read it once twice maximum three times and I say okay he couldn't have meant you know more than this but with the Quran because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has said this and it has in the been said in the maximum level of accuracy so everything we have to be careful 10 times 20 times 100 times maybe even more you need to read and think and do tadabbur tafakkur maybe the Quran opens up its you know, secrets for you. One of the concepts which are, which is, uh, you know, one of the concepts which are very important in the Quran, the concept of haq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he himself is al haq. For example, he says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأنه يحيي الموتى وأنه على كل شيء قدير. This is Surah Hajj, verse six. ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأنه يحيي الموتى وأنه على كل شيء قدير. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is al-haq and because he is al-haq he has authority what he says what he does are to be trusted to be accepted to be believed in in 
Surat Hajj verse 62. Allah says, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ هُوَ الْبَاطِلِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرِ This is because Allah is Al-Haq. For the time being, I don't translate Al-Haq because it's to be discussed, whether we should say Al-Haq here means the true or the truth. Because Al-Haq sometimes means the true, sometimes means the truth. And this is different from Haq which means right. Okay, we are not talking about Haq in the sense of right, for example, human rights. No, no. we are talking about Haq in the sense of truth. But in Arabic, it can be noun, it can be adjective. Okay? Yeah. So. For the time being, we just use al-haq. Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, you know the term and you know some Arabic, so we don't need to translate because translation can become a barrier. So Allah is al-haq, and what they call other than Allah, like idols, they are al-batil. They are false. Okay? If you look at these two verses, you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is arguing for his authority, for his sovereignty, for his undisputable position by saying that he is al-haq. Yeah. So, in other words, he wants to tell us that I'm not asking you to obey me and worship me arbitrarily. There is truth here. There is haq here involved. Those people who create a statue and they say worship this statue. This is bottom. This is false. There is no reality. This statue is like any other statue. You know, they had this uh, practice that sometimes they used to make a statue of dates. And when they needed food, they used to eat. <laughs> the God. <laughs> and then make another statue when the time of harvesting, you know, dates come, <laughs> then make another. So this statue is nothing. Yeah? There's no reality, there is no truth in it. Or if, pardon? At least it's food, not just a stone. No, that reality is there, but I mean as Lord, as God. Of course, it's a real, it's a real thing, but not a reality as God, as Lord. Or if a person, a human being like Pharaoh, if he says that you should worship me, I am your Lord, and I am your Lord. This is not haq. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that I don't want you to worship me arbitrarily. I don't know whether you get uh, the depths of the point, you know. Allah with all the position that he has, with all the perfection that he has, when he wants us to follow him, he says, don't follow me just without reason. Follow me because I am Al-Haq. Okay? In other words, I ask you to follow Haq. And if you use your Aql, you come to the conclusion that I am Haq. Okay? So, for us to follow Haq, we don't need any reason. But even for following Allah, we need a reason. What is that reason? That Allah is Haq. Did you get the point? If, if, if someone says, why do you follow Haq? We cannot go any you know, point further. What can I do other than following Al-Haq? Haq is reality. Reality is there. 
When I say to follow reality, this is very important. What does it mean to follow reality? It means to accept the reality, to acknowledge the reality, not to deny and hide the reality. Can any rational person do anything other than acknowledging the reality? If there is something here, do I need a reason to accept that it is here or to acknowledge? Only a confused person or an ignorant person or an arrogant person can deny the reality. Either you are ignorant or you are confused or you are arrogant. Otherwise, when you see the reality, you should accept. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am haq and those idols are false. Now, refer to your heart, to your conscience. Do you want to ignore haq and go for batil? It doesn't make sense. How can an intelligent person close his eyes to haq and believe in some kind of illusion? You know? For example, here there is no bread. And I want to believe that there is bread. This is foolish. If there is no bread here, how can I believe him? Yeah? When something is bottle, how can you believe in bottle? How can you dedicate your life to bottle? How can you worship bottle? So this is not rational. On the other hand, when there is haq, not to believe in haq, not to acknowledge haq is also not rational. Okay, so we are reaching in this ayah, in my understanding, in this ayah, we are reaching to the basic level of understanding. If someone has problem with this, then it means that that person, even in the most basic part of understanding, has failed. I'm not talking about whether he believes in God or not. That's something maybe we need to argue for him, whether God is true or not. I'm talking about whether we should follow Haq or not follow Batr. This is, I think, something that is the bottom line. If someone has doubt, in this question. If someone says, I don't understand why I should follow Haq. I don't understand why I shouldn't follow Batil. If someone has problem in this, I think there is no way to argue with this person. Because this is the very basic thing. What can I mention to convince him which is clearer and more appealing to human beings than Haq? Okay? Mm -hmm. If someone says, I want to follow Batil, what can you say to him? Good luck. <laughs> you can say, believe in me because I am Batil. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, believe in me because I am right. I am true. If you say, believe in me because I am true, he says, I want to believe in Batil. Mm -hmm. So can you say, I am Batil mm -hmm. and believe in me? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there is no way to discuss with this person. Okay? But I don't think you find many people who accept this. I think most of human beings accept that they should follow Haq. But the problem is that they don't commit themselves to Haq. You know, they don't want to, first of all, they don't want to see Haq. So, there are some people that, you know, when it comes to God, to religion, they close their eyes, they close their ears because they don't want to understand Haq. Because they say, if we open our eyes, maybe we understand. We don't want to understand because it creates obligations. You know, in uh, the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pagans used to ask people, especially those who were travelers, you know, 
pilgrims to Mecca to put cotton in their ears <laughs> so that they don't listen to Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So one person was doing a tawaf and had this cotton in his ear and then he told himself this is not rational. Why I should do this? I can listen to what he recites. I can accept if it is okay or I don't accept. So when he removed this and he listened to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then he found that this Quran is something different. He couldn't resist the attraction of the truth coming from Quran and he became Muslim. Yes. So if people close their eyes or you know their ears or their mind so that they don't understand the truth this doesn't mean they don't love the truth they don't want to commit themselves to truth it means that they love the truth they want the truth but they are not ready to pay the cost they are not ready to you know sacrifice their comfort unfortunately although we all love truth from childhood we love truth you, if you look at you know very young children, you see how truthful and honest they are. Yeah. Yes. So, for example, you know, a person, for example, knocks the door, and you know, two-year-old, you know, boy or girl says, you know, he says, "Where is your dad?" He says, "My dad is in," but he said, "Tell him I'm not here." <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you know you see these things. So, because they are very honest by nature, we are honest, we are truthful, yeah? Unfortunately, they learn lying from family, from school, from friends, from movies, from this kind. They learn to lie. We don't learn to be truthful. Yeah? To be truthful, we don't need to learn. It's natural for us. Actually, one of the requirements of speaking is to be truthful because language does not work unless we are committed to truth yeah when i say a is b the only way it can work is if i mean a is b even those people who tell lies they can tell lies because everyone assumes that they are telling the truth yeah if you are in a society that people all tell lies, then liars have difficult time because no one believes in them. So we don't learn to be truthful. Unfortunately, we may learn to be liars. Okay? So most of people, they love truth. But then how much they are ready to pay for it? Okay? For example, if they have a customer who wants to buy their car or I don't know some good they see by telling a lie they may lose the customer so some people still don't tell lies some people calculate if it's a matter of losing one pound two pound ten pounds they don't tell lies but if it is one million pound, they tell lies. Okay? So it's very much based on how committed they are to truth. And actually in this way, you can also value, have the value for the person. How much is the value of a person who tells a lie for 10 pounds? You tell me how much the value of this person. 9.99 that is the maximum value that he has if he tells lie for 10 pounds if he tells lie for 1000 pounds so it, yes so now see how much we are selling ourselves cheap if we tell lies for these things sometimes we tell lie to make someone just happy why we should tell lies okay so People, generally, they love truth. But unfortunately, 
they are not ready to sacrifice for the truth. Imam Hussein alayhi salam said something about religion, which is of course also a matter of truth, because this is Deen al Haq. Inshallah, I will explain it. Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, "An nas abidu dunya, wa Deen laqon ala al sanat. Fa iza muhsu bil bala fa qal al dayan." People are servants of dunya. It means that. They are servants of money and power and fame and these type of things. And they just give a lip service to religion. But when the time of challenge and test comes, you find those who are really committed are very little in number. They're not very few. They are Allah the young. So everyone says, you know, truth is good, you know, they give lectures, they write, you know. Papers on truth, but then فَإِذَا مُحْسُو بِالْبَلَاءِ if they are challenged and tested, how many people tell the truth? For some people, you have to ask them, you know, please put your hand on the Quran or the Bible so that you are sure that they tell the. But for some people, if you put their hand on hundreds of Quran or Bibles, still they tell lies. So, this is the sad. Reality. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "He is Al Haq." ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأن ما يدعون من دونه هو الباطل أرض ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأنه يحيي الموتى. Also, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Yunus, verse thirty-two. فما ذا بعد الحق إلا الضلال. very beautiful. فما ذا بعد إلا الضلال. what is there after حق except misguidance. if you don't commit yourself to حق then you have to commit yourself to misguidance. What is the difference between batil and zalal? A question. What is the difference between batil and zalal? If someone can give answer to this question, I think zalal when you have lost your way, and then I accept his invitation for lunch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Batil is, is the wrong. Batil is the wrong, and uh, the Lalmin and someone lost the way. Okay, so, so what's the difference? You are right, but then what's the difference? One's falsehood itself, and the other one is a person who got confused. So they're, they're just not very close, yeah. Yes. Following falsehood is uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, Batil is something that doesn't have a reality. And the lal is going around, but not knowing the right way to that reality. So the lal is to go after batil. Okay, this is what you wanted to say. Yes. Okay, so I come for that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Zalala is ignorance, not the Zalala is different from ignorance. Zalal means to miss haq. This is the meaning of zalal, to miss haq. To miss haq can be because you don't know haq. But that is jahl. So jahl can be a cause for zalal, but it's not the only cause. So zalal means to miss haq. So one way of missing haq is that you go after batil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sometimes he says, "Anma yaduuna min dunahim wa al baatil." Sometimes he says, "Fama da baad al haq illa zalal." So when he says "illa zalal," he refers to condition of people. When he says "baatil," he refers to the condition of what people go after it. Okay, 
Is it clear? Yes. So, if you don't go for truth, for haq, you are going for battle, so you are in the condition of dhalal. And now you realize, so what is hidayah? Hidayah is to reach the truth, not to miss the truth. Yeah? The dhalal is to miss the truth. Hidayah is to reach the truth. It's a hidayah. Okay. In Surah Nur, chapter Nur, verse 23. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يومئذ يوفيهم الله دينهم الحق On that day Allah will give them completely their true reward Deen here doesn't mean religion Deen here means jaza means reward and punishment Okay then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya'lamuna anna Allah huwa al-haqqul mubin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will realize, they will know that Allah is al-haqq, which is also clear. Because haqq, can be sometimes not very clear maybe because we have problems personally or maybe because we are in a condition that that condition creates problem for us okay for example we are in dunya this material world is the world in which we cannot see all the truths Okay? On the day of judgment, in dunya we have ghayb and shuhud. Can you see the angels? No. You cannot see the angels. Can you see, I don't know, the light of salat, the light of wuzu? No. These are realities, but you cannot see. Can you see hell and heaven? No. But these are realities. Why? Because in this world, we have cover in front of our eyes. There is a veil. لَقَدْ كَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاعَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيمَ When we die, this veil will be removed. Of course, this veil for every person is different. غِطَاعَكَ Some people have very thin veil, some people have very thick veil. Yeah? Yes, there are people who are in dunya and they don't have veil before their eyes. Those are exceptions. Amir al Mumini said, Law kushif al When the veils are removed, my certainty would not increase. Why? Because veils, veils are removed for us, not for him. For him, there is no way. Okay? So there are people who can see the truth now. For them, there is no way. But these are exceptions. Otherwise, generally speaking, people in dunya, they have this problem. But on the day of judgment, everyone, mu'min and kafir, they would see many things that even in dunya, good people cannot see. But in Akhirah, even Kuffar can see. Okay? Because there is an element of increase in understanding that happened to everyone who dies, whether it's a good person or bad person. Okay? So, one of the things that happened to every person, Mu'min or Kafir, is that they would be able to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very, very clear way. Very, very clear way. We have to wait. <laughs> so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that 
he is for them look at this ya'lamuna anna allaha huwa al-haqqul mubin allah is haq is the true thing the reality the truth whatever it is which is clear okay so it's clear how the veils are removed how our understanding would increase this is something that we have to wait and see of course some people can have this experience even in dunya maybe at least for moments they can see the realities but most of us we have to wait but because this happens to everyone on the day of judgment then on the day of judgment to believe in God it's not a merit it's not an achievement to believe in the day of judgment on the day of judgment is not an achievement yeah even most stupid person would accept that because yeah someone who has de been denying police for example working when the police has stopped him <laughs> cannot deny yeah those who were rational they said you know it seems there are cameras there are police machines you know there must be something but some people want to not accept because they want to you know be free to do what they want but who can deny yawm al qiyamah on the day of judgment who can deny allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment but then this is not a credit yeah in dunya where there is a chance of denying because it is not that clear in the sense that you cannot deny then if you believe this is a credit for you and this is one of the reasons why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make things 100 percent clear for us in the sense that there would be no chance for people to do some kind of you know mischief you know why in the quran we have muhkamat and mutashabihat because allah wants to leave a little chance for some people so that he knows who are the people who is zayd in their hearts who is you know some problem in their heart why allah for example doesn't mention the name of imam ali in the quran one reason is this to test people because if you make everything 100% clear, then how can you test it? If every day Jibreel comes to your house and says, Allah has sent me to you, then if you believe in God, this is not a credit for you. Yeah? So there must be a kind of gap a kind of epistemological distance between us and the truth so that we make a little effort and in this way we will receive some credit okay this is something that we should discuss in another uh, maybe session inshallah anyway allah is al haq but for the people on the day of judgment he is al haqqul mubin Maybe for some people also in dunya, Allah is haqqa mubin. Yeah, like what Imam Hussain alayhi salam says in Dua Arafat. Mata ghibta hatta tahtaja ila dalil. Ayyakunu li ghayraka min al-zuhur ma laysa lak. So for Imam Hussain, dunya akhirah doesn't make difference. For him, Allah is haqqa mubin. But for us, it makes difference. Okay? Because our knowledge of God is through concepts. Our knowledge of God is the knowledge which is al mahusuli For awliyaullah, for Urafa, it's different. Anyway, so Allah is haqqa mubin. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have also created this world bil -haq. He is Al-Haq and creates the world Bil-Haq. Now you understand why you have to learn Arabic. Yeah? 
I can you know, translate this into English, but it's not the same thing. Allah is Al-Haq, but He says, He is the one who has created the skies and the earth. Bilhaq. What does Bilhaq means here? Mean here? It means truthfully or with full observation of truth. This is my translation. Maybe you don't find it in any translation of the Quran. But Bilhaq means this. It means out of commitment to Haq, this world has been created. So, for him to be happy is essential, then for this world to be happy is not essential. It's the condition in which they are created by Allah who is essentially happy. Okay? Is it clear? No. Sorry. Yes. Sure. I am grateful that you, you know, say no because this is your honesty. Yeah. You know, for example, if we have a person who has great knowledge, okay? So we say this man is an Adam, a knowledgeable person. Then he writes a paper or a book. How this paper has been written? This paper has been written based on the knowledge that that person has. So it has been written bil ilm. Bil ilm. Some people write bil jahl with ignorance. Some people write with confusion. Some people write by copy pasting. So they beserka. Yeah, this is by like theft. They yeah, they steal from other people. So there are different ways. It can be bil jahl, it can be bil hayra, it can be bil sarqa, yeah? It can be bil mezah, as a joke, they write something. But an alim, when he writes something, he writes bil ilm. It means that you can see his ilm reflected here. Okay? He didn't write it for anything other than commitment to ilm. So, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Al-Haq, He creates the skies and the earth, then you can understand that this creation cannot be accepted bil -haq. Because there is no way for falsehood to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that then it can be reflected in His creation. Okay? If I do something which is battle, it means that there was something battle in me that has now appeared in my work. Is it clear? If I have jahl, then that jahl can be seen in my work or can be covered. But if I don't have jahl, there is no way for jahl coming out of me. So Allah is al-haq and then he creates the skies and the earth bil-haq. Yes. So, inshallah, Think about this, you know, please, and we will continue this discussion, inshallah, uh, next week. We'll after that one, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen.